On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about ways that you can progress load if you don't have access to a ton of equipment. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Hey, welcome back everybody to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. I'm here with the crew from Champion PT and Performance up in Boston, Massachusetts, answering all your questions. Anything you want to talk about, PT, fitness, sports, performance, career advice, we're here for you. Just head to MikeReynolds.com, click that podcast link, and you can fill out the form to ask us a question for a future episode. Um, let me see, who do we have today? I, you know, it's funny how Zoom just like throws in everybody in, in the video. So I, you know, I'm just going to go with what Zoom does, but what do, you, what do we got today? Let's see. First up, we have Mike Skidudo, oh. Kevin Coughlin, Lisa Russell. <laughs> Did you just see that change by the way? <laughs> I was just reading it. <laughs> so sorry, Lisa Lowe. Sorry, Pat. It's her new uh, marriage name. Well, it's not really new anymore. We got to get we got to get over that. Sorry, Lisa. Uh, Dan Pope, Dave Tilly, Lenny McCrina, and Dewesh Podell, all here answering your questions. Len, we we have a lot of students here at Champion right now. It must be that time of year just where they they tend to line up. But um, really yep. great group. It's it's been it's been fun to see um, this many people together, kind of learning and growing together. But who do we have today, Len? Do we have some some introductions? Anybody new? We have some introductions. Probably new since uh, we had our last podcast last week. Um, so we have two students from Duke University. Um, I don't want to date the episode, but they might still be in the NCAA tournament. Uh, we have Grace Suggs and Aaliyah Penner, both, <laughs> I, both from I, I, Duke. I can definitively <laughs> say that's not going to line up because that's like in 24 hours or whatever. Right. <laughs> but so, <sure. laughs> I can't believe they lost in the final four. That is sick. <laughs> right. To North Carolina, that's crazy. <laughs> Sorry, Coach K. Uh, we have Dean Bonneau from George Washington University, Sean Bean from UNLV, the rebels rebels yeah whatever and dan not chapel chappelle yes that's right dan chappelle from uri no relation to uncle dave what what made you think it was it was chapel by the way i don't know like dean could be bono but it's bono fair enough it's okay, just the syllable. It's where the, it's where the <laughs> s- s- syllable is. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I guess. Acknowledging I, options. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, who's up today? Uh, who's going to be reading today? See, I always think whoever takes the lead, like especially in a group of five, you know, total mm, alpha oh. right here. Uh-huh. Let's see who's up. Let's see who's the alpha. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. right. Let's go, Grace. That's what I'm talking about. Sorry, Ursula we just spiked the audio. Europe. Did you hear me, Ursula from no. Europe? Yes. Could you give us some more suggestions on how to progress rehab program when working in a setting with very limited equipment access? I've read so much about loading for strength gain recently, and I feel like I just can't do that at my work current workplace, so I'm struggling with how to make the cha- program challenging enough. Awesome. Great question, <laughs> Ursula. I like that. And I bet you, Ursula, I bet you're not the only one that has these um, problems, right? So, you know, I, I think what's great about this question is that Ursula's identified that she's been learning a lot and she sees the need to add more loading to her. And I, I would say in the rehab environment, in the physical therapy world, we probably load people poorly, right? In general, as a profession, I would say not everybody, of course. Um, but I'd say that's an area that we probably are lacking on sometimes. So I think it's awesome that Ursula sees the need, but she's in a clinic that doesn't have a lot of equipment, right? So, you know, common dilemma. I bet a lot of people are doing this. I'm hearing from a lot of clinic owners that are actually now starting to get out there and try to buy equipment for this exact need. But what do you do in the meantime? Who wants to take the lead on this one? Who wants to, who wants to start off? I think the guy with two strongman trophies in his background should do it, Dan. Check it out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, what's up, Dan? What do you think? So, like, you've been in clinics before, right? And not every clinic has squat racks and barbells and 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 bumper plates. What, what, what have you done in the past? How do you load people if maybe you don't have access to some of that fancy strength and conditioning equipment? 
Yeah, it is kind of funny, right? If you're like an outpatient gym with kettlebells up to like 16 pounds, that's like hardcore, right? <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, usually it's like 12 pounds is like the top for dumbbells and then maybe some Pilates equipment or, you know, maybe some, some machines if you're lucky. And that's tough. And I've been in clinics like this in the past. <clears throat> and it's challenging because um, not a lot of folks have the money or they have the space to put in like a squat rack with bumper plates and all the crazy stuff that maybe we have. But I do think there's a few pieces of equipment that go a long way. When I was in a, um, a smaller outpatient facility, I ended up bringing my own equipment in, you know, um, wow. and I brought in, yeah, just because I've seen a lot of patients that really needed a bit more load for their goals. And I think if you could, you're able to get some adjustable dumbbells, maybe something like zero to 50 pounds, um, it's something that takes up very little space. Uh, nowadays, it's a bit more expensive, but it's going to be something that goes a long way. If you just have some dumbbells up to, let's say, 50 pounds, you can do so much with the average person. Maybe for someone who's a higher level athlete, you'd be a little bit you know, struggling in terms of trying to find enough load for them. But that's a great place to start. Um, the other thing I think is super duper versatile and doesn't take up a lot of space is trying to use a landmine. So if you guys haven't heard of a landmine before, you just take a barbell, you put it on one end and you put plates on the end of it. And it can kind of act as a dumbbell or a barbell. You can squat, lunge, press, you can do so much with it. It's kind of crazy um, if you're just a little bit more creative. Um, and the other idea that I had <clears throat> for folks is to try to dabble a little bit more with blood flow restriction training. Now, BFR is, I would say it's more of an introductory um, type of treatment just because you're using lower loads and oftentimes a patient over the course of time is going to have to tolerate higher loads at higher speeds. And that's not what BFR is all about. Uh, but you can use around 20% of the patient's max and do higher reps. So 30, 15, 15, 15 is a common set and rep scheme. And you can get people quite a bit stronger, uh, build muscle mass. Um, it's phenomenal for rehab in general because most folks can't tolerate much load initially. Um, and those can kind of get you by. And I think if you're doing those you know, three things, you're probably doing more than 80% of clinics that I've seen in a standard outpatient place. So, yeah. And you can probably get pretty creative with just that. I mean, what, what you just listed there was just, you know, hundreds of dollars and on the low end of hundreds of hundreds of dollars too, to be honest with you. So, um, you know, it, you know, upgrading some of your equipment, Ursula, I think is, is, you know, probably a reality that's probably going to have to happen. And there's some creative ways to do that without spending, you know, 10 to $20,000. But, you know, I, I feel like as a general rule of thumb and, you know, please nobody tweet this, but, um, you, you know, if your PT clinic looks worse than like a holiday in fitness center, that's probably a bad sign, right? Like you probably need to have a little bit more equipment than just what you'd find at a at a very low end hotel. Um, so I, I, for me, I think if you only have 12 pounds, you don't have enough weight, it, you're you're either, you know, your your patient demographic is either, you know, not somebody that you you care about loading, or you just have a completely different treatment model. So I, I like the suggestions there from Dan, I like the BFR suggestion too, because if you don't have access to is what BFR allows you to do is is get some significant strength gains with lesser load, which is something you're dealing with in in your setting which is fantastic now that doesn't replace loading in the future but it is an adjunct towards that and you know it sounds like ursula you know that would be you know a good step but um dave what do you think you want to add anything to that yeah i was just talking to i think maybe Ali about this the other day but i mean obviously the getting equipment is what i think we all would suggest but i think sometimes you're dealing with maybe managers or people who are not as receptive to doing that really fast so you're still stuck for a couple months without that so I think it's important to remember, <clears throat> although not ideal, um, there's a lot of different ways to make exercise harder without it just being uh, load dependent, right? So you could, in the short term, maybe find some patterns that are maybe more challenging, just going from a double leg squat or a double leg hinge to a single leg exercise is going to be a little bit more challenging. So doing a step up or some sort of split pelvis might be more challenging, but also you can play around with some of the other variables like tempo and pause and density and, um, you know, back to back sets. Um, or volume and stuff like that to maybe make things harder in the short term. So, you know, instead of getting a 50 pound goblet squat, you could probably easily do a, you know, 12 pound dumbbell uh, tempo pause split squat and maybe elevate the front leg or the back leg if it's appropriate for the person. And uh, that's pretty terrible. Like it's really hard to do like a good three second, one second pause and a one second uh, on the way back up for like seven reps of that. And if you pair that with something else, that's gonna maybe got some density for isolation. So some knee extensions, if you have ankle weights or some other sort of planking exercise, you can probably build a, uh, build a pretty decent program that can maybe make the ends meet for maybe a month or two before you can, uh, you know, pick the battle of getting some more equipment that you need. So I find in many times, 
uh, particularly people have like back or hip issues or stuff like that or lower body. And I mean, the upper body is very similar with single arm movements. Um, sometimes people don't tolerate load really well early in the rehab setting, which is why we use BFR. But like things like single leg exercises or split pelvis or um, other options are usually more friendly anyways. So you might be able to kind of cheat the corners that way with it. Right. Great suggestions. I like it. Uh, Kevin, did I, I, you want to add to that? <clears throat> yeah. Um, I just want to say I've, I found myself in this situation being in a clinic without a ton of equipment. Um, and I kind of did a combination of what Dave and Dan both alluded to. So I used some, some money early on just because I have a long-term goal of kind of having my own home gym. So I think, you know, if, if you're going to, if you're going to invest in, in equipment for yourself, just, you know, you can bring it into the clinic. So that was something I did that was helpful. Um, and then even getting creative, just like most of these types of, of facilities have either like hand weights that go up to 10 pounds or something or ankle weights. So if you even get like a backpack and throw some of the weight in there, uh, it's, it's at least a way to do a little bit of loaded, you know, that's something I did a lot with like Achilles tendinopathy patients or plantar fasciitis. So maybe start with like double leg stuff, like Dave was saying, with just some tempo, uh, progressing to like single leg. And then if you get one of these backpacks, just normal backpack and throw some weight in there, uh, at least you're able to get the most out of what you have. And then, you know, if, if it's a clinic you see yourself at long term, if your clinic isn't worth, if they're not going to invest in it, it's an investment you can make on your own. And I think the patients would definitely greatly appreciate it. Yeah, and you should probably over time probably consider, you know, maybe getting in a work environment that uh, thinks that loading is is beneficial for people too. And that's kind of one of the things that jumps out in my mind, kind of listening to some of these answers here is, you know, we're talking about hundreds of dollars and, and you know, a champion, we always talk about like our treatment paradigm, it's, you know, it's mobility control load. And like we, that's kind of how we deal with most things, mobility control load. Uh, if if you're building your your practice and you don't have the ability to load, you're missing out on a, a good chunk of of the treatment, right? Uh, Lisa, what do you think? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I was just thinking, even within the clients that we see at Champion, a lot of times I have people who aren't able to come in as frequently as they would need to to use our equipment to be loaded often. So, um, what I've had a lot of people do, and I know pretty much everybody else does this too. Um, I will have them if they're like a YMCA member or, a, you know, planet fitness person or whatever their other gym is, I'll have them let me know what equipment they have and then send me videos of them moving, you know, during their workout so that at least they're not, I always make sure they know I don't want them to waste their time <clears throat> just because they can't come in. They, it doesn't mean they can't make progress. Um, and so even though we have the load, like not everybody can always come utilize the load. So being able to let them use what they have at home or encourage them to just like get a gym membership so that they can do what they need to, you know, getting a YMCA membership is not that expensive. Um, so people being able to do that and then have access to load, it, it seems to work pretty well when people can't necessarily make it in or then also if you just don't have access to load in your clinic. Yeah. And you know, you, it also made me think too, like if your clinic doesn't value loading and it doesn't have enough equipment for loading, you probably need to have relationships with some, some local gyms too. Anyway, that probably needs to be part of what you're, you're helping your patients with is, all right, I've gotten you past, you know, these beginning steps. Now it's time to progress over there. Maybe you collaborate with some strength coaches too, you know, or help them with their own home program at a gym. I think that's great. Um, Dwesh, as our strength coach on the call for now, right? Um, you know, and I don't, I don't want to lead your answer here, but like I was thinking, like we just went through COVID, right, where the gym was completely shut down, and we were helping tons of people exercise and still meet their fitness and sports performance goals at home. So you could you could argue we kind of face that to an extent, but I, that including you know your other thoughts, but I'd love to hear from a strength coach's perspective ways that you can help people build some loading capacity when maybe you don't. Have have access to all this equipment. Yeah, for sure. I, th I think Dave definitely covered a lot of it, right? I think it does come down to utilizing your variables um, to increase a little bit more of the, the total amount of stress on the body, um, right? Whether that's the number of sets, the number of reps, um, increasing the time under tension. Um, but other creative ways that we can kind of go about it is kind of doubling down on different types of equipment. So what I'm talking about is imagine you're doing like a dumbbell RDL, right? But let's say we only have those 12 pound dumbbells or, well, you can stand on a pair of bands and you can hold the band tension in the hand on top of the weights. Now you have your 12 pound dumbbells plus some extra band tension, right? So and that's kind of some of the stuff that we ended up doing. 
as we were going through COVID, we just kind of found creative ways to start adding on, you know, different levels or different types of tension um, on top of the conventional weights that they had. Um, and then the other thing that I think is very underutilized is really using gravity to our advantage, right? So if you put someone on prone or quadruped for an upper body exercise, uh, that becomes way harder, right? So stuff like that, I think can definitely go, you know, quite a long ways. Um, and I believe it or not, like people that are willing to get creative um, and maybe, you know, you as a, as a clinic have to be a little bit more creative. But I, I remember I had a couple of kids throughout COVID, like literally start filling up like jugs of water bottles with sand and stuff and, you know, crazy stuff like that. I had a kid actually make like his own squat rack. He didn't have the money to buy a dumbbell and barbell and stuff, but he went out to Home Depot, bought some wood and, you know, filled up some, some water jugs with sand and stuff. And he had a, he got a barbell. So that's, that's, there's, that's crazy. This, this sounds like yeah. a young Dan Pope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Dan, yeah. Dan, Dan was mentoring this kid along the way. Yeah, what, what do you fill it with? Because you like, you could argue like a pound of water might weigh different than a pound of feathers, for example. <laughs> who, who would make that argument? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just seeing who's still awake. I like that. That's great. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, I, you know, Ursula, I think the main point is there's ways to get creative, right? I, I, I like what Dewey added right there. I've seen people use like gallons of milk that are, you know, filled up with various amounts of water for different exercises. There's definitely ways to do it. Um, there are some low cost ways to also get some, some equipment in your facility that allows you to do a little bit more. You don't have to break the bank and spend $10,000. You can do this in a, in a probably a budget friendly way. So that's probably a conversation worth having with your facility because I think that is an important one right there there's definitely some different things that are out there so for example you know mike scaduto just brought up a good example uh there's a new company called uh anchor uh a-n-c-o-r-e that's just outside boston that we met with the owner the other day and uh, they have a great device for 500 bucks that essentially is you know the size of uh um you know it's I don't even know what's the size of like, like your a sneaker. TV remote. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like the size of, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's in, and, and it replaces essentially like a 60 pound cable pulley. So, you know, I think that, you know, you get some power blocks, you get a barbell, like Dan said, I still think we're looking at pretty much underneath a thousand dollars that you can amortize over the cost of every patient that should be coming in your clinic. So I, I think there's ways to do it, but I also think, you know, as others suggested, there's ways to manipulate variables and just set rep schemes and tempo and loading and, and, and stability. So, uh, so hopefully those tips helped, Ursula. Um, I don't think this is a rare predicament. So, um, you know, if, if you have other suggestions or things you've done in your clinic, throw it out there on social media for us. We'd love to see it because I think um, this is a pretty common thing. So I like this question. So uh, thanks again. If you have a question like that, head to MikeRonald.com, click on that podcast link, and you can fill out the form to ask us a question just like that. And be sure to head to iTunes, Spotify, rate, review, and subscribe, and we will see you on the next episode.